Happy New Year's, guys. Welcome to 2026. I think buckle up because this is going to be a very, very accelerated year when it comes to software engineering. So I want to give you my thoughts and my prediction on where the industry is going and what I'm currently seeing in the industry. Because last year, I kind of started going more all in on AI because I've seen how useful it is. But this year, you kind of have to be naive to not do it. So my first prediction of 2026 is that most of the code that we write today will not be written by hand. It will be written by these LLMs such as Opus 4.5, GPT 5.2, and new models as they come out. You will be using these CLI tools like Claude Code, Codex, uh, Droid, and you will also be using IDEs, okay? This is how software engineering is basically gonna be, like this is gonna be the default way of coding. And I think if you have not tried these new models, these very powerful models that can literally one-shot features that modify 40 files in your code base, then I think your eyes have not been open yet. You need to wake up. You need to try these tools, maybe invest some time in buying a subscription to one of these really powerful models, try it out on a side project, try it out at work, and see it go through your entire code base. For example, I have a, a code base that's like 500,000 lines of code, half a million lines of code at work, and I just one prompted an entire feature. It went through 40 different files, it added a brand new feature, it added unit tests, it added Cypress tests, and it reran those tests until everything passed. This is the future, there's no doubt about it, and I think if you just kind of accept it now, you're gonna be in a much better position. And don't even take my word for it, there's other engineers out there I've talked to that have like 15 years of experience, and they're also all in on AI. We can even go listen to Ben Awad. The world where you hand type code is pretty much over. If exactly, the world that you hand type code is pretty much over. Now granted, this is the most sarcastic creator I've ever met online, but realistically, I have actually shipped a ton of things without writing any code. For example, I made a whole 2D multiplayer game I barely wrote any code here. I think 95% of all this code for this multiplayer game was written by an agent. All I do is I basically direct it with a high level goal of what I want, the technical details, and the entire game was basically slowly generated using LLMs. My agentic jumpstart course platform, this thing is also written purely with AI. This is just agentic coding, using these models, having it add in new features, having it fix bugs, using AI to generate summaries, using AI to allow me to log in as an admin, and then go to a vector search and search over my code base for like a database, which video is, is talking about databases, and I have vector searching hooked in automatically. All this I did not write. This was literally one prompt to Opus 4.5. It added in vector searching, it added in the, the ability to run through all my transcripts and vectorize and break my, my thing into chunks and basically implement it for me. And by the way, if you do want to level up your agentic coding game and use these tools to get better at shipping code much faster, go check out agenticjumpstart.com. This is my course. I have almost 80 videos now with 12 hours of content and I'm still publishing more stuff. We talk about Composer, we talk about uh, Claude Code, we talk about Cursor, we talk about the basics of agentic coding. And then we also build out a full stack web application. I get it deployed out and walk you through how to get that set up with Stripe and Railway and all your API keys with Google OAuth. It's a really great value. So go check out the course if you're interested. And then of course, Automaker. This is a tool that me and my Discord have been working on. We literally just prompt all these models to add in all these features and all these panels. We have the ability to switch projects, the ability to create new Kanban items. These items get kicked off automatically using Claude Code's Agent SDK, which runs Claude Code under the hood to add in features to your project. The automation and writing all this code by hand is literally dead. There's no reason to write code by hand, maybe unless you're working on a lower level project that's in like C++ or Rust, or something that really requires that manual manipulation of memory and understanding truly what's going on. So that's my first prediction is that most people will not be writing code anymore. We will be just prompting uh, LLMs, especially if you can afford it. Now, if you can't afford LLMs, I, you're probably doing code by hand. I'm not talking to you guys, I'm talking about the people who can afford these LLMs, but that's where I'm seeing this industry go. Second prediction I'm seeing in 2026 is that we're having more autonomous tooling, like these harnesses that basically wrap these CLI tools where you can kick off a prompt or give it a huge amount of documentation describing exactly what you want it built, and then you let it run, and you let it run overnight. You may, maybe you run it, let it run for like three or four days. And then you come back and you check and everything has been implemented. There's MCP plugins that can load up Playwright, and it can load up a browser and start clicking around your web UI and verifying that what it's adding is actually correct. There's tons of stuff coming out now, like Ralph is one, where basically you can just let Claude code run for hours in a single session until it finishes what you asked it to do. Sometimes these LMs will stop early. You have to come and kind of babysit them. Ralph allows stuff to just run until completion. And so if you can get that documentation and that prompt thing correct from the first get go, you're gonna have a really, really great uh, outcome at the end. And diving further into this automation stuff, there's Steve Yegi, I think his name is. He built something called Gastown. Before Gastown, he worked on beads. Gastown, if you read through this, this is a huge article, but basically it's a fully autonomous system that has all these different agents that will take an idea and kick off one idea to a different agent. And then that agent will kick it off to other agents and basically just builds 
multiple work trees and commits to different branches and tries to automatically merge all your code and get it uh, basically deployed out there. He said he built this thing in like three weeks and it's already like 100 or 200,000 lines of code, which I believe because it took Automaker maybe like a month of us just doing agentic coding. Uh, we're doing it more manually, right? But we're at 100,000 lines of code in Automaker right now. And so we are seeing this acceleration of churning out code. And a lot of people are going to be like, well, the code is, is bad. No, it's not. The code is actually pretty good. If you can provide it good context files, you can get really good outputs from these agents. And also, if you just kind of do a quick scan through and maybe kick off a couple more like review prompts or security analysis prompts, you will be able to have non-slop generated AI code. I think we're going to see more of this type of stuff like Gastown, where we actually have entire applications being built by these agents. You just give them some, you know, give them some credits, let them run all night, let them run for a week come back and check the results and then you can kind of tweak it for the next iteration where it can just go through and make it even better. So where does it leave us as software engineers? Like we used to be able to code stuff by hand and now these agents basically do it. I think it's going to take a lot of time for us to actually transition to this. I think if you are on social media, you're on X, you're on YouTube watching people talk about this stuff. There is a small subset of developers who are actually like all in on this AI stuff, but there's also a huge amount of developers who are anti-AI they don't want to use it. They don't believe that it's good. And they're still kind of living in the stone ages when it comes to understanding how powerful these tools are. So it'll be a slow transition and we'll try to slowly, you know, train people and onboard them and teach them how to use these tools more efficiently. So I think the third prediction is we're going to see a lot more people trying to onboard and train how to learn how to use these tools. The whole automation thing I talked about, it's a really cool idea, but again, that's just like the 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 tip of the iceberg. Most people are gonna be slowly transitioning to figuring out how to use cursor on the project, how to use Klein. But for a majority of everyone else, we are gonna have to train and try to figure out how to get better at context switching, how to handle six different Claude code instances, adding in different features to various parts of your code base, right? That's gonna be the hardest thing. And also becoming context engineers. It's not just about prompting anymore, it's about providing tons of documentation requirements and context so that the agents know what do you mean by clean code. Notice here I have a clean code MD file. This describes to the LM how to write better React code, how to write better JavaScript or TypeScript code, how to make sure that your code is decoupled, maintainable, your code is dry, you don't have a bunch of duplicate code spread out through all your code base. These things, the context engineering is what's going to put one developer over another who are using AI, right? If you're just sitting here using Copilot and tab completion, like you're already way behind in my opinion, because we've went past that. We went from tab completion, we went to prompt engineering, now we're at context engineering. Now we're gonna have fully autonomous systems where you can kick off 10 different agents inside of Claude Code to go and explore something and then come back and implement. Something I do all the time, for example, I'll be like, hey, can you please kick off 10 sub agents to go explore how we do authentication in my code base? And then after you figure it out, I need you to refactor any security vulnerabilities that you find using 10 other sub agents to implement these changes that you find. Okay, and if I were to kick this off, what Claude Code actually does is it spins off 10 different like threads basically with new context windows. And then it's gonna go explore my code base and come back with a nice consolidated list of how you could probably refactor my code to make it more secure. And then you'll see it kick off 10 more agents to go and implement those changes all throughout my code base. And you will have a giant git diff like this. This is from a prompt last night, 36 file changes from one prompt, right? Now I will say that this does not negate the need to understand code. You still have to become senior software engineer you need to understand the higher level design patterns of object-oriented programming. You need to understand how to make code decoupled, how to make code efficient, how to get stuff all deployed out. What is infrastructure as code? What is DevOps? Like all these things still matter. And the better you are with that foundational layer, the faster you can prompt, the better context you can set up to basically drive these agents to implement all the code for you. Unfortunate parts of this is I do think some fields of this industry are going to basically vanish. For example, front-end engineering, I do think will slowly go away. I have done enough prompts with Claude Code and Gemini 3 Pro where I don't even have to design my UI. Everything in this UI, like I mentioned, is AI generated. These drop downs, the ability to search through and find certain lessons, this is all AI generated. Your progress as you go through, your ability to switch modules over here. I didn't actually code this. I just prompted an LLM and it generated it for me. And so I think what you need to end up realizing is that Sitting here and building out React components by hand, that's kind of dead. Designing UI components, that's also kind of dead because you can just prompt the LM and say, hey, I need you to increase the padding or the typography or the, the margins between these. I need to improve the contrast, improve the accessibility. Often when you're you know trying to improve stuff, you can just go and run a lighthouse thing, copy the whole report, drop it into an LLM, and it goes through when it improves your entire website. 
Okay, so knowing how to do these things is important and it can, again, help you get better outputs, but you are not gonna be doing this stuff by hand anymore. I'm getting designs, like I didn't have to think about this design. I went and I found some good mock-ups of what a course platform could be. I took a screenshot, I dropped it over into cursor. I told it to analyze the entire website, analyze the typography, the padding, the margin, the, the, the line heights the font sizes, and that created an MD file for me. And then I used that MD file to apply it to a page. So it went through that page and it applied all the Tailwind styles to it. It made it look really nice. And then when I had that page built out, I said, okay, now take that off 10 sub agents to go through my entire application and refactor every single page to follow the same conventions that I've defined in my Tailwind config and inside my this documentation. So it's these type of things that you will not, your first instinct will not be to do these things. Your first instinct will be to go and open up a file. Let's go and find like the index. And then we're going to go and like modify that by hand. And then we're going to go in the next page. I'm going to modify that by hand. Like that's, that's done. Like you need to be using these LLMs to code because that is basically where this industry is going. Where does it leave you if you're a software engineer and you haven't tried these AF tools? Well, I would say probably try them. Um, I would also say probably tr start diversifying what your values are, right? If all you can do is code, you need to start becoming more versed in project management become more versed in communication, become versed in marketing. Kind of like what I'm doing on my YouTube channel. This is a, a side hustle that I do, but I train my ability to market and make videos because I don't want to be stuck in just writing code. I want to kind of diversify my skills to make sure that if something were to happen in this industry where software engineers are no longer important, I still have a fallback plan because again, I have bills to pay. I have a, a family to feed. And so I would recommend not only just learning these AI tools, but start diversifying more outside of the code. I think the code and writing the code is slowly becoming a commodity. I could find like a, a 20 year old kid fresh out of college teaching these AI tools and he could probably start creating a ton of value and like adding in these features, letting these agents run all night. And then hopefully he knows how to properly review it and use context to review the code for security vulnerabilities. But that's basically what's going to happen. The code, writing the code is becoming a commodity, is becoming something that's super cheap and easy to do. And now it's going to require you to level up your higher level understanding of software, architecture, code architecture, system architecture, cloud uh, development. But what I do think is gonna happen a lot more now is that we're gonna have one or two man companies basically build huge software with just agents. And so I think there's gonna be like developers building out SaaS products and they're all managing the entire SaaS product by hand because they've leveraged these tools and they're becoming very, very good at running these harnesses and these agents to fix, the, uh, fix bugs as they come in. For example, like, you could have a bug report modal in your application. And when a user submits a bug, you could have that automatically get triaged by an agent. The agent can run through. It could fork your repo. It could start making those changes. Then make a pull request. And then you could have another agent go and pull that pull request and run like a, a Playwright MCP server to step through and test that change to verify that it's fixed. And then if everything's good, we can get that automatically merged into main. Now, there are security vulnerabilities with that. And I probably wouldn't trust merging that to main without a human intervention. But the point is, is that we can slowly automate all these things. A single feedback report item from a user can be hooked into a complete automation where you have that bug basically fixed for you automatically after about five or 10 minutes. Anyway, there's probably a lot more things that are gonna be happening and maybe I'll make another update video in the future, but I think those are my predictions for 2026. I think it's gonna be a wild ride and I think the people who are embracing these tools and truly understanding how to use them and move fast with them are the ones who are going to end up making a lot of money and being more secure in the future. I've already seen companies interviewing and asking you to use AI tools and they're kind of evaluating how versed you are with using Claude code, how versed you are you're using and chatting with, you know, a side agent panel. And I think that's going to become more relevant as time goes on. And hopefully we'll get away from like asking leak code questions. And this is the future of like, can you actually build stuff? Show me you know how to build. Show me you know how to re-prompt and check the code for issues. Show me you know how to actually kick off multiple prompts at the same time to work on a bunch of stuff concurrently so you can actually make a lot of progress. I do have a course where if you guys want to go and learn the stuff I've learned along the way with using Claude Code and Cursor, you can go check out agenticjumpstart.com and I have over, like I mentioned, 80 videos teaching you how to become an agentic coder. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good day and happy